Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as you learn how to take your health back. Today, we have two very enthusiastic women who are very passionate about your children's learning experiences through science as they spark their awareness with things around them. Welcome Dora Nakafuji and Ananda Ferreira. Aloha guys or girls. Thank you. So, so Dora, please tell us a little bit about your background. Well, uh, Wendy, this is probably a few times that I've been on this show, and it's always exciting to have be on the um, on the show with you. My um, background is I'm an engineer, and I'm uh, currently at Kamehameha Schools, and I'm in the Strategy and Transformation Group. So my role is really to kind of work across our various um, assets, from campuses to properties to our lands and look for efficiencies and innovation technologies that we can actually bring to our landscape that can help us um, modernize, but also be more efficient in the way that we use our resources. Wow. And Dora, you have a few uh, alphabets that follow your name. I can't even spell them or get them in the correct order. Is it PhD? So <laughs> tell us what your PhD is in, uh, Dora. Uh, so by training, I'm an aeronautical mechanical engineer. So that just means that I like to work on systems that integrate a lot of different uh, engineering systems together from uh, energy to propulsions to flying in an aircraft because you have everything from sanitation to food service. Wow, so I'm always so very proud whenever I see that and whenever I'm with Dora, I feel so special because she's one mighty Wahini that took education up and beyond in, in the aeronautical engineering field, Wahinis. So learn from her, listen to her, feel her passion, and you too can do this as well. And so Ananda, I would love to uh, share what your history is all about as well. Thank you so much, Wendy. And I agree. I think Dora is one of the smartest people I know. So I love working with her. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, so I've been working with the Y for the past 16 years. I started off in the fitness center uh, as a college student. And once I graduated, I realized that I need work experience in order to build a meaningful career. And fortunately, the Y was there. And I thought that I would gain awesome skills, but I gained so much more. I had the opportunity to tell parents that they qualify for financial assistance. And I got to see those children thriving in our programs. And that's when I realized that I was a part of something greater. And so I've been strengthening communities in Hawaii with the Y of Honolulu for the past 16 years. Wow. Um, I've worked in many, many capacities, human resources, development, membership, marketing, and also as a branch executive director. Um, we work on association-wide initiatives, including diversity and inclusion, healthy lifestyles, philanthropy. And I'm currently leading Kupuna and volunteer strategies. I oversee the Kaimaki Wailai branch, which is located by Kahala Mall. Please stop in and say hello. Um, we are a gathering place and we're welcome to all ages and backgrounds and abilities and interests. And we offer not only expansive health and fitness resources classes, but we also have um, programs to help people of all ages from toddlers to kupuna to become their best selves in spirit, mind and body. And so we serve thousands of children, adults, and senior, uh, seniors every year. And we also have served thousands of meals to Keiki in need over the past two summers during the pandemic. Wow. So what doesn't the Y, uh, y program do? What don't they do, right? And that's our goal. And my heart has always been integration of Kupuna and Keiki. And that's exactly what you're doing there at the Y. And so that's why we all resonate well to carry on with this journey to just get them together, hanging out, liking each other and communicating with each other and making it more like the blue zones. And that's the qualifications of blue zones when you have the Kupun and Keiki communicating with each other. I think that's so very, very important. And I myself as a product of the Y, I mean, baby and me classes, the exercise programs and the continuing exercise uh, postpartum as well. So everyone I'm sure has had one step or one hand in the YMCA or the YWCA programs as well. So thank you for being here, ladies. So I know we have so much to talk about and so much energy that we wanna put off and share with everyone. And I know we wanna start about this uh, SPARK program. Tell us about what is Project SPARK? Well, um, Ananda and I can probably tag team on about this, but it actually just started out as kind of a concept of, hmm, can we like link together concepts of land, ocean, and space, and then create a meaningful 
experience for um, children or students um, and learn from practitioners that also work in this space of land, air, and space. And so SPARC is actually an acronym for science, place based ancestral research, and know-how. And the reason that we wanted to do that is because it's really a uh, offering a, or an opportunity for many of our students who could be um, sparked or in, basically inspired, and then give them a place that they can play, you know, and check out all these different exploratory opportunities, and then put to practice something that they really kind of are passionate about, and then eventually get to that level of performance that then brings out their skill sets and they become practitioners to teach others. So at any age, you don't have to be a kapuna just to teach it, but these kids can actually teach themselves, teach others, and that's what's exciting. And so offering this as a way to connect the whole cycle from land, ocean, and space, this is all connected one system. That's what it's all about. And then connecting to the community and the practitioners so that they get some um, hands-on experience. Wow, and I love the name Spark. I mean, it's like another uh, another name for light. And, you know, we always want to work with light, sunshine, brightness, and everything in that uh, arena versus the other side. So is there anything you want to add to that, Ananda? Just want to say that, um, you know, this project was sparked by our um, uh, friendship and partnership and um, so excited by where uh, the ideas will spark for the children in the future and where they will go with their passions and um, their interests from this program. Wow. So uh, from a spark, we are going to cover all the different aspects. So we're going to start with a little bit of land connections. So we all know that every little creature has its role in our existence. So please tell us about a sweet creature that you had um, introduced uh, their system and what they do in their role in our society. Um, uh, Dora, I know that this is exciting for you as well. Yeah, um, so we, we actually shared some um, images of this opportunity with the kids. And um, <clears throat> so when we think of land, we always think about agriculture and um, a lot of our elementary students uh, get to experience growing kalo in the lo'i. And one of the things that we, when we started working with a lot of the farmers is that we also realized that pollinators are just as important here in Hawaii. And without pollinators, we don't actually don't get fruit and we can't get you know, seeds to continue. So um, working and teaming with a lot of our industry folks and, and this project, because we, we are we're reinventing how we engage with students, right? Um, this, this group of kids was middle school age kids. So they're kind of at an age where they're kind of like, you can't wow them anymore. They kind of know more than, they think they know more than we know already. And they're not high school, <laughs> they're not high school students where, you know, they, they're pretty much, you know, busy with their courses and they're, 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 they're a little bit more just in depth of what they're already interested in. Middle school age kids, they need to be sparked, right? So they want to be able to find someone maybe that they can see as a, um, a role model. And so what we did was we brought these practitioners that were really passionate about their, their, their roles. And, and it wasn't just a job. It was like a way of life for them. So they shared values. They shared connections to the land. They shared culture even. Um, because we're such a mix of different ethnicities, right? So I think it was really helpful to see that kind of connection. So the first thing we started with was these pollinators and started with bees. And bees, there are social bees and there are solitary bees. And so we worked with one of our practitioners, Jasmine Joy, who is um, a partner or the founder of Believe Hawaii. And she practices what's called ethical beekeeping. Wow. And it was amazing because what she brought was not only kind of the spiritual connection to these creatures of nature, but also this ethical practice of all the life cycles about the bees and their, their, their productivity, their ability to produce things that, you know, we as humans can now enjoy, which is honey, but also the science and what is in the honey. So things like that, the things that we also did was we taught the kids 
about um, where solitary bees and where um, social bees live. So there's a connection also to our community too, because we actually launched it during the summer for this perfect spark. Um, the, the kids were, and there's another slide I think of working with the kids where they got to help us restore the bees, the beehives. We restored eight beehives, 80 new frames, which then the bees can actually make their combs off of, which resulted in 500,000 um, uh, bees to be, to be rescued basically from the swarms. So if we're thinking about preparing spaces and preparing them about taking care of nature's creatures and also taking care of also maybe even just our house's community. I mean, how, how does that connect to our society? We were rescuing bees and, mm -hmm. and they helped us do so. So that's, that was with Jasmine Joy. Wow, oh, that's, you know, I, I, I want to jump in because the bees, I mean, just bringing that hive to the students, most, most of us, even adults, we don't get to see that. And so you just wonder, how the heck does that little insect, that little bee make that honey? And why is it the bee so important? And people, I'm glad you brought that to the students because people have to realize the importance of that bee. Because I always, simplicity, uh, for simplicity's sake, I would say, if it, we lose all the bees, we don't have the flowers, we don't have the produce, and then what happens to us? So it's really brilliant of you all to bring that from the very beginning of your sessions um, to show this to the keiki, how, the, how important it is to take care of mother nature and the byproducts, which is the bee. And I just congratulate you. I mean, I, when I saw that, I was like, yay, touche. And I know that you uh, brought in the right people to speak on that and get them excited and interested on it because that'll just spark one more bit of curiosity for them to want to dig into it and understand more and maybe even just appreciate honey and the value of honey and where it comes from. And then you mentioned that, you know, some bees, bees are social and some are independent. And, you know, I surf and more and more these days, I find that I'm surfing with the bees. And um, what that simply means is we find a lot of bees in the ocean with us. Maybe they got off course, maybe the wind blew them somewhere they shouldn't be, but we try and save them and we dry off their wings and we try to bring them to shore. I don't know what the success rate is, but we feel we're doing a little bit of our part. And so I, I just like, I can so resonate with this whole process of the land. And now we talk about water. And I, as I said, the bees were in the water and here we are, we're gonna be talking about the water in our next um, segment right now. It's we here in Hawaii are surrounded by water and that's why the bees probably end up there. But sometimes we take it for granted. So I want you to talk to us more about water and being wise on its use. Yeah, so the next connection, which is land to water and the water to space eventually, but the land uh, has definite connections. We typically grow things in the land, but what we're also realizing is that it, the land also needs water. Water is what life depends on. And so one of the things that we've been learning about too is this, this whole connection to the environment and the water cycle. So learning about platforms that are much more efficient in the way that we grow, um, conserve water, utilize water and recharge it back into the earth, into the land, they're all very important. So um, thanks to you, Wendy, uh, we have uh, the tower garden, which has allowed us to introduce this concept of being water wise and using these platforms to teach a, a different way of farming that utilizes aeroponics. And the kids actually find this a, a really fascinating because everybody thinks about, oh, we need the soil, but some of our, our kids live in urban areas and they don't have access to a garden or you know, they just don't have the ability to um, farm land as we traditionally think. However, these are um, aeroponics or hydroponics or aquaponics, they're actually providing opportunities and new platforms for our next generation of farmers, agrotech you know, industry um, farmers that can actually take advantage of or utilize these resources or these, these platforms to grow. There's also a, a very um, exciting connection to space because you wouldn't, one of the questions we always ask is how would you farm in space? And these platforms offer us that connection to, to dream beyond what we're doing here. 
But you have to know foundationally how to grow. You have to know what it takes to care for a plant, um, the nutrients that it needs or the plant needs in order to feed ourselves. So the platforms were an amazing thing that, that you, you were able to introduce us to and uh, we're utilizing it in the community. And, and on that, you may be able to share some other things that you were able to do with the Tower Garden um, over the course of the pandemic too. <laughs> Oh, yes. You know, um, the Tower Gardens, we were so fortunate to have them on loan uh, through Kamehameha Schools. And thanks to a grant, now we own one. And we're so excited um, because, you know, our footprint is pretty small. And so to be able to grow these gardens vertically is just amazing. And so we actually were able to help um, provide fresh uh, veggies to our employees that were on furlough during the pandemic. We also were able to provide um, veggies to children in our um, learning centers that were there while uh, essential workers were out there working. Um, and we also were able to provide to Kupuna uh, who came in through our doors. Um, so it's really been a wonderful addition and we're very happy to have it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Wow, that's amazing. You know, there are so many options of growing food, you know, aquaponics, hydroponics, this system, aeroponics or vertical growing systems, all very amazing. And the best part about any system is a system that works for you. And it depends on your space, your land space, you know, your your degree of time uh, investment. So it, it just matters. And there's a system that suits every one of us. We just have to research it a little bit more and find the one that works. And that's the one that will take care of you. I know I've been growing in my towers for almost 10 years and I'll never stop. So I know that you at the Y focused uh, on two different methods of growing food this summer side by side. Please share with us this experience of uh, what were the results of growing side by side, whether it was Diana, whether it was uh, vertical growing, share with us your results on that. Thank you for asking. Uh, so we do have a very small, and by small I mean, you know, very small, <laughs> little um, garden uh, that is out by our parking lot. And we also have our water garden towers. And one thing we found is that the plants grew much faster with the water garden towers and also um, the bugs didn't get to them um, in the water garden towers. So, so I would say, you know, it's really great for the children to be exposed to both options. Uh, methods and that's something they can bring home to their families because they may not necessarily have resources for a water garden tower but they can also grow something in a pot or in their backyard mm -hmm. right so as i mentioned the system that works best for you is the system that will create good health for you because you're taking the time to to invest into yourself by growing your own food and the other part for me is the, the prayer is that families will find community and communication around growing. And mm -hmm. while they're in the tower or in their fields, you know, they'll take time to talk story and hear about the days, you know, what went on in the day. So I, I truly believe in what this is all about, not just eating healthy, but growing healthy together. So now Dora, let's discuss healthy airspace connections. Tell us more about that. So for this year, this is actually the second year we uh, did the uh, Project Spark with the YMCA. Um, the last time we did it was actually the 50th an anniversary of Apollo 11. So we actually had an opportunity to launch some rockets with um, uh, Mount West uh, Winbrook Community College. But this year, because um, we actually were looking at a lot of this environmental and um, clean air, how do we, um, mitigate more carbon back into the atmosphere we started looking at these our trees right our giant air scrubbers if you will <laughs> and they produce oxygen for us they they sequester the carbon um and we work with a a nonprofit organization led by wiley it's smart tree specific and they do a lot of what's called citizen forestry educational programs and they've been helping out um, communities map out their green spaces by documenting their uh, urban trees. And that's actually helping the city and county of Honolulu as well to um, ma manage the trees, but also be cost effective. Because if you don't take care of the trees, even if they're in the sidewalk area, they will die. So that costs a lot of money for taxpayers. So all these kids got really engaged in learning what citizen foresters do. 
And what we hope is that they will be part of the next group of citizen foresters to help us continue to document, track, and also collect data on the trees. So they all got to learn about measuring trees. They learned about the science, the morphology, the, the, um, and how to collect data. So right now in this slide, you can see the, the kids were being exposed to the different um, leaves, different types of trees that we find in our neighborhoods, and then learning to, to name them as well. And so these high, healthy giants really are about a reflection about how healthy our, our own planet, our spaces are. And so in the future, they can maybe be those green citizen, uh, citizen foresters, but also smart about building urban communities and cities where we have green spaces. So it's exciting to see that. Yeah, I love that when um, I, when I first heard that term, you know, that the, the trees are like the air cleaners or the uh, what, what are you, the air scrubbers or- Air scrubbers. Right? I mean, they clean our air, you know, I mean, not, not just by the, you know, the science part of it, but just even your pre presence in our environment where the wind is scrubbed by the trees. I mean, it's just really, it's brilliant. I, I wasn't made aware of it until I spoke with you and I was on that show and I heard it and I thought, wow, that's amazing. So, you know, even we as kupuna are still able to learn and uh, understand the value of what we have in our environment. So tell us a little bit about what is a citizen forester action? So this one, this was actually kind of fun because every time Wei and his crew comes out, we learn more about um, what they have to do out in the community to actually document the trees and you know, getting data on trees is not that all that easy, but all these kids, I mean, they were amazing. So we, what we, we did was we actually, because we did, not everyone ha has the rulers ready, right? And we actually had to practice math. And then we actually used our rulers to give them um, what, what they call a um, diameter standard height where they go and me make the measurements. Because when you make measurements for trees on how wide the tree trunk is, you gotta measure it at a certain, certain location not two feet off the ground, it's not five feet off the ground because it's at 4.5. So what we did was we gave, we let, um, showed the kids using their, their own body parts as ways to make measurements. And then we applied math, geometry, to, to estimate the height of the trees. And so they were using body parts and using these, you know, you see kids doing this and making measurements. So these are all trade, tricks of the trade, if you will, or actually practices that they do in industry to estimate height. So we gave the opportunity, the kids an opportunity. And um, it's funny, we broke them up into teams. They got to do the est estimates working with um, the, the citizen um, foresters. And we all got them together and they had to compare notes. So it's just my, very much like working on a team and we took an average of the, of the data. So it really was hands-on in the sense that they practiced some math, um, they actually, learned about using their body parts and really being able to perform, right? We were talking about playing and then practicing. They were performing now. So the next time they're called to go out and figure out distances, hopefully they'll remember practicing their pace and using their body parts as measurement devices. Wow. That sounds like a MacGyver technique, <laughs> right? You don't need a carry a tape measure or a ruler when you're out in the forest, use your body parts. I mean, that's you improvise and that's exactly to me the term MacGyver and how he survives in any in any situation so you're giving these students these kids our children life skills that they'll always be re able to use not just with plants but even just in life so I love it I mean every day that we can learn one more thing it's just phenomenal for me so Ananda let me ask you were you a product of the why I was not as a child, surprisingly. I wish I was because I've yeah. been exposed to so much more. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm jealous of all the opportunities that these kids have. And I'm, I'm glad I get to be a part of it through their eyes because uh, Dora was talking about the tree um, yes. learning. And it was fun to see the kids apply that to our big tree in our yard. And, um, <laughs> you know, I learned a lot also <laughs> along with them. So that's been really fun. Well, so tell me, um, how did the Y get involved with all these great programs that are we're, that you're sharing with us today? Thank you. So as Dora mentioned, um, we started working together a couple of years ago, 
And uh, it started because Dora's children were uh, in our program. And so we got to know each other and she was sharing about Project Spark. And I was just so excited because it's perfectly aligned with our goals. Um, at the Y, we focus on building a healthy spirit, mind, and body for all. And we take a holistic approach to wellness and Project Spark supports that. And uh, we're stronger together than separate. And this certainly was the case this past summer. So we decided to focus on our middle school program, which is called Na Alakai, which means the leaders. The program addresses the immediate and future needs of middle school teens and local communities across Oahu with a focus on the skills needed to thrive in school and in a post-COVID world. In addition to physical activity, team building, and character development, um, we instill our five core values of honesty, caring, responsibility, respect, and diversity. And we have four main goals of the program. One, community and culture, which includes developing the skills necessary to be a YMCA change maker. Life skills, kind of like what Dora was sharing with Mappy, uh, college and career exploration, and mental health awareness. And so Project Spark provided opportunities for our children to be exposed to new and exciting experiences through incursions. So they brought the bees to the Y and the plants and the water garden towers to the Y and studying what we have in our very own yards and broadening their ideas and sparking uh, wellness and providing structured activities in a safe environment for our youth to grow and thrive. Wow, boy, I was gonna ask you, um, I mean, you explained everything in a nutshell, but I just wanna ask you in a real quick um, a sentence or two, how has COVID affected the WISE programs with the Kikis? Well, it's a new reality that we're living with. And I think what's so critical is that we provide those um, hands-on person-to-person activities because uh, now they're in front of a screen so much. And so we provide those uh, active um, interaction opportunities. Wow, thank you for never giving up and being so creative and all these PhDs, doctors, and just parents and just love of citizens, putting together your heads together to continue to build and encourage our Keiki to uh, thrive and strive to be more and want more. So how does our audience get in touch with you and find out more about your projects that you are all creating? Well, well sign up for the why. <laughs> <laughs> Just to call you, Ananda, call you directly, yeah. call the why. Give me a call, 737-5545, or email me, a Ferreira at ymcahonolulu.org. Wow. <laughs> okay, we got it. So we've come to the end of our program. So you've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo to Dora Nakafuji with Kamehameha Schools and Ananda Ferreira from the YMCA. Thank you for talking story with us and sharing your spark for life and for our Keiki. We truly appreciate all that you are doing. And we just welcome all of you back in a couple of weeks to see more of what Take Your Health Back has to share with you. I'm Wendy Lowe and aloha for now. <laughs>